Chronic Hoosier joins us now, and lots of things happening. Pat Knight, to expected to be named the new coach at Marion. This uh, that probably won't happen until later this week, but uh, the news has leaked out. And uh, good for him uh, coming back home. He's been living out in Las Vegas for the last few years, but obviously he was looking forward for a reason to get back, and uh, he will be. Although uh, he's going to be up north of Indy a little bit. Yeah, school near and dear to his family's heart. Coach Knight uh, long supported Marion's efforts, even uh, even up until his uh, his final acts, where he asked that uh, you know, in lieu of flowers, send donations to Marion University. Yeah, uh, Steve Down is Steve Downing still there? Yes, he is. He is. Ah, big. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, my God, Steve Downing played for Knight back in what seventy two, three, something like that. Yeah, one of his first teams. Yeah, been around uh, as the athletics director uh, at, at Marion, and uh, so congratulations to Pat. We look forward to talking to him about. I, I didn't think he would get back into coaching. That's just such a grind. Uh, of course, I don't know how much of a grind scouting is. That could be just the same and just and just different, but which is what he has been doing for the Pacers for some time. But or maybe it was just an opportunity to get to move back to Indiana. I'm not sure. And uh, well, I'll ask him whenever I get to talk to him. But boy, that coaching thing, especially I was talking earlier in this day and age, it's not. It's it has not gotten easier. No, it hasn't. Um, but you know, I, I, this is funny. I just had my parents over for dinner, uh, Sunday. And as my kids are going through all the trials and tribulations of their teenage years and college selection and all that stuff, pop culture, uh, you know, that's the one constant throughout all of it is, uh, <laughs> we always think the kids are just different than what, than what we knew, what we thought of. And they are. Uh, you know, it's, it's not anything other than we no longer connect with them, uh, as we get older. And I think that's been the one constant throughout history, but, you know, the benefit for Pat, um, Marion, uh, probably a little different waters than, uh, what you see at the power five level, as far as, um, you know, some of the, uh, some of the nuances and the intricacies, whether it be NIL portal, things of that nature, and don't get me wrong, um, it's it's certainly something that that every team struggles with um there's always going to be the risk in today's day and age that you know you you identify develop um grow talent and the talent outgrows your pond and it moves on to a bigger one and uh you know it's certainly a, a challenge that every team you know duke included now has to deal with uh but it's probably a little bit easier at the lower division levels, not to say that you're not going to still lose your guys uh, whenever, um, you know, more attractive suitors come calling. Uh, but at least you're not, you're not necessarily swimming in, in the myriad of issues now that played college basketball. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, I'd be curious to see what Pat's motivation was when he comes on, but I imagine it's a little bit different gig than uh, signing up for P5. Uh or, you know, at least major division one at this point. Absolutely. And it continues to add to the mystique of, I don't have, and I'm missing a school off the top of my head, but when you think about the division one schools in Indiana, you've got Notre Dame and Valpo, Purdue, Indiana, Indiana uh, University at Indianapolis. University uh, Indiana of State. Indianapolis? Yeah, or that's, maybe that's... Uh, that's separate. That's, yeah, yeah, you... And See, Columbus is get getting me all confused. Uh, ISU, Indiana State, uh, Butler, uh, Evansville, and most of these schools, you know, Notre Dame's head coach, Michael Shrewsbury from Indiana. Val Paul, their head coach is not from Indiana, but uh, A.J. Moye, uh, assistant is. Purdue's coaches from Indiana. Indiana's coaches from Indiana. Uh Butler is not from Indiana, but he's quasi an Indiana an Indianapolis resident has been for a long time, uh, and it's just nuts how it, so many of those coaches are from within the state. Dusty May just had a great article. He said, "You want to get you want to get a job in basketball? Be a manager at Indiana University." It's a uh, yeah, uh, it's quite a massive and uh, well connected fraternity for sure. 
And that just look at all those guys within the state are, that are recruiting the talent that comes out of this state. Now you add into that. Tom Izzo has been doing it for a long time. Fran McCaffrey has been doing it for a long time. You know, Dusty May is going to be doing it already is trying to do it. Um, so there, there's going to be a talent drain uh, that continues to, to happen here in this state. You've got to get the good ones, good ones when you can get them. No doubt, but I, you know, I've, I've been saying for decades now, um, th there's a reason for that. And it's the abundance of great coaches at every level of the game. Um, starting from bitty ball all the way up, uh, Indiana grows great basketball players because Indiana has great basketball coaches and of uh, all the traditions and legacies. I think that's perhaps, uh, the strongest and the most important, uh, because without those coaches, you, you don't get that talent. It just doesn't happen. And it, and like I said, it starts from the beginning and it goes all the way up. Um, but the maturation of, of basketball players in Indiana is is as phenomenal as it is directly related to the uh, the quality of the coaching and the instruction that they receive uh, at, at pretty much every step of the game. I still remember I took my son to Twin Lakes for his first uh, his first basketball experience, and man, you want to get humbled real quick. You think you spent some time with your kid in the driveway, getting some shots up, working on the handles, and then you go out there and there's a you know a kid that's doesn't even come up to your belt and he's just ripping threes like he was born to do it. And you're just like, son, um, sorry about them jeans. I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah. Uh, earlier I was talking about the outlook for the big 10 in basketball next season. And I'm like, I'll be honest with you. I, 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 I have, I'm going to say, I have no idea, but I have little idea at the moment because I don't know what, Illinois is going to end up looking like, or Ohio State, um, or Michigan State for that matter. Indiana looking strong, obviously, with the, the talent. They they obviously have the talent to be right at the top, but it's not, it's going to be different. And it's going to be, I think it's going to be a lot more fun of a season because we are not going to have this outlier of Zach Eady in the conference. And that is going to be the great equalizer. And I, I'm looking forward to a hell of a fun season next year in the Big Ten. No, I think it's going to be wild. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's it's probably a – this is going to give us a good taste, at least for the time being, of uh, of the new flavor of college basketball. Because you look across the league and you're seeing teams basically getting completely remade uh, through the portal. And it's – it's it's a wild time, uh, and I think it's going to put a premium um, on on you know we we talk about all these intrinsic qualities of coaches, uh, but the ability to meld a team to get guys to buy into the team concept um, to get you know dudes that have you know maybe it's their last stop in their career, maybe they're coming in you know as a, a, a late addition as a true freshman and everything in between. Uh, but with different wants and needs from that experience and get them pulling in the same direction. Uh, it's going to put a premium on coaches ability to pull things together and get guys to gel. And uh, I think that starts with the, um, uh, with the recruitment, with the targeting, with the, uh, the offering. Uh, but at every step along the way, you've got to take um, a large, large group of guys who are, who are largely unfamiliar with one another and get them on the same page and pull them in the same direction in a relatively quick fashion. Um, and, you know, I, I think we talked about some of the things that are always the same with kids. Kids are always going to have different motivations. Um, that's, that's nothing new. Uh, but with the ability for kids to, to move around as freely as they now can, um, you know, whether it's just getting a couple extra minutes, trying to, you know, get more playing time, whether it's making the leap to the next step, uh, you know, whether it's just coming and getting a great free education and everything in between, um, you've got a lot of guys with disparate interests, uh, that, that now have to find a way to cohese. And, uh, that's no small feat. You know, you look at the, um, uh, one, another thing we've been saying for years, look at the Kentuckys, uh, of the world, or at least the Calipari Kentuckys. Um, you can have the greatest assemblage of talent year after year after year, but if you can't get them uh, working in the same direction, you're just not going to get the results that you want. So uh, I, I think talent acquisition is always going to be paramount, but I think hand in hand with that now, the ability of coaches to develop cohesiveness of a team, 
um, to get guys to accept and embrace their roles uh, within the team, I think is going to end up being everything because it's uh, it's wild how many new faces are coming into this league right now. You know, look no further than Indiana, uh, Ohio State, and Michigan, and you know teams that that you know I think by a lot of accounts underperform this season. Uh, or at least by what what the fans had expected them to, or the media had expected them to. Um, doesn't matter how short you fell last year, you can completely erase that and then some uh, with the portal additions right now. So it's going to be fascinating to see how the league shakes out. But like you mentioned, uh, you take away that that seven foot four behemoth, and uh, the playing field certainly got a lot more leveled than what it was this time last year. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it just because it's going, I think it's going to be that much more fun. I think it's going to be that much more entertaining. Uh, And one thing that stands out to me is the fact that it it appears that Mike Woodson and his staff seem to have heard the noise in regards to in-state recruiting and have altered things now. And I think that Matt Painter is also going to have to accept the fact that that you can't go completely that way either. It's like both of those guys have gone in, in all in, in in one direction. Woodson was trying to get the, the the best talent he could get outside or wherever, and Painter has done the, the opposite. Well, now they're both going to have to adjust somewhat. Matt Painter is going to have to adjust a little bit to the transfer portal. You cannot bring in six freshmen, I, I don't think, anymore. Uh, and have half your team be underclassmen, uh, you know, in the following season. While at the same time, you cannot continue to ignore uh, or not have the best talent of in-state guys, which uh, India obviously Woodson is is working on getting the guys from the twenty-five class now and all of that. But it's taken; it will have taken what four years for that to really happen. But we're seeing a convergence of at least one side of that. Yeah, and you know, there's there are there are landmines being laid for future seasons right now as you try to patch up your roster and put the pieces in place to be competitive this season. You know, look look at Indiana. You've got uh you've got four guys uh who are set to lose uh eligibility at the end of the season. Uh Malik Renu will then be your lone senior, assuming that he comes back. Um, you know, uh the junior class. Uh, while you're going to have, you know, currently uh, four of the seven scholarships uh, that are currently enrolled at IU, four of those seven are going to be juniors next year, uh, but only two of which have been here, you know, from the from the jump in, in Cups and in, in Baco. So uh, the continuity is going to be something that's that's really, you know, one of those those interesting factors from season to season. Um, you know, how do you maintain an identity when you're constantly replacing so many bodies, uh, the leadership vacuums that get created there. And, you know, I think it's, and Woodson loves to do this. I think a lot of fans love to do this, you know, assume just because you're an upperclassman, therefore you are a leader. That's not always the case. Not every guy is built for that role. That's just not how their, their personalities are constructed. So, a ton of challenges await for that because you know you've got to find guys that can step in and assume that leadership role, and I think that's that was one of the things that was really really lacking with Indiana, especially at the start of this season. Um, you know who was out there really taking command of the floor uh, in between the whistles, and uh, you know the the absence of that leadership uh, was kind of glaring at times. And I think, you know, credit to Trey Galloway for really stepping up in the second half of the season, credit to Anthony Leal for coming off the bench and taking, uh, you know, assuming some of that role. Uh, and I fully expect those guys to be front and center, uh, and guiding this team this year, but you get to go ahead and, and repeat the process again, every season now with so much fluidity in the, in the roster. Uh, that's going to be one of the challenges that, uh, I think it's going to be very difficult to manage. Uh, you know, I think you go back to Tom Crean and look at where where things didn't go well, and that was probably one of the, the biggest reasons is, you know, you have a class that's got a ton of great leaders, a ton of natural leaders, a ton of guys that have matriculated through the program uh, from the beginning of their careers. And then in that void, uh, it's tough. You know, look no further than Yogi Ferrell's sophomore and, and junior year 
in how Indiana got a little bit of drift during that time uh, and how they were able to get things back together once he'd become a senior and, and matured and really grown into that role. And then the vacuums created again and so on. So I think that's going to be one of those things that um, you have to keep an eye on as you look at how these rosters are being constructed, not just for the immediate season, but how does that lay the groundwork to follow? And, and then, you know, all the best laid plans can completely go out the window if somebody decides there's maybe greener pastures somewhere else. So I, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a wild and fascinating time to see how coaches across the league, but especially locally, manage uh, all those new forces at play. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat Radio. And thank you for enjoying our content and videos. And make sure you hit that subscribe and notifications toggle so you don't miss out on anything, whether it's Indiana Hoosiers, the Boilers, the Colts, the Pacers, Indiana High School action, whatever is happening in sports, we're trying to bring it all to you. And make sure you don't miss out on a thing. Again, hit the subscribe button for us. Helps us out a ton. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much.